Welcome to this third introductory video of Colibri's Entrepreneurship and Corporate Entrepreneurship module. Let us recall the essence of what entrepreneurship is. The problem, the solution, the opportunity, and the company creation. Remember the goal is to solve a problem and not to implement a particular solution. You may choose whichever way you want to solve this problem. So you have to search for ideas, i.e. engage in some form of brainstorming in order to facilitate your creativity. So let us look more closely at what creativity is all about. Creativity is an essential skill of an entrepreneur. It is the ability to imagine or invent something new. We might ask, are there specific creativity methods that we can learn? Well, yes, there are five established techniques in uh, creating new ideas. E evolution, synthesis, revolution, reapplication, and changing direction. I'll say a few words about each. Evolution is the method of, ra of raised improvement. New ideas stem from other ideas, new solutions from previous ones. The new ones slightly improved over the older ones. Many of the very sophisticated things we enjoy today developed through a long period of ongoing incrementation. Making something a little better here, a little better there, gradually makes it into something a lot better, even entirely different from the original. Think of Gillette's razors and how they have developed over the years from a, a one-blade razor to an ergonomically designed five-blade razor. We, have, we all have a desire to improve the way we do things, and we are also never short of an idea of how things could be improved. And this is what the creative method of evolution is all about, improving things. In synthesis, uh, this is all about mixing different concepts together and joining the dots. With this method, two or more existing ideas are combined into a third new idea to come up with a multifunctional hybrid. Think about the iPod and the telephone. These were synthesized to give birth to the iPhone. Revolution involves coming up with a, diff a completely different approach to the way something is currently done. Sometimes the best new ideas come by thinking outside the box. This method can produce results that may be unexpected but prove effective. Let's take e-learning as an example. Instead of thinking, how can I make my lectures better? A revolutionary idea might be, why not stop lecturing altogether and have the students teach each other, working as teams or presenting reports? Reapplication is all about using or doing something in a completely different way from what was originally intended. To do this, you need to detach the object or method from its environment and, without prejudice or expectations or assumptions, to imagine how it could be reapplied in a different context. For example, a paper clip can be used as a tiny screwdriver if filed down. Paint can be used as a kind of glue to prevent screws from loosening in, mach in machinery. Dishwashing detergents can be used to remove the DNA from bacteria in a lab. And general purpose spray cleaners can be used to kill ants. An existing object or solution may need to change due to problems or obstacles brought about by changes in its environment. You would then need to look at something old in a new way. Think how the object or solution can be reapplied in a way that overcomes the problems or obstacles but maintains or even improves its functionality. The key is to see beyond the previous or stated applications for some object or solution and see what other application is possible. A classic example is the, uh, that of a highway department trying to keep kids from skateboarding in a concrete lined draining ditch. The highway department put up a fence to keep ki the kids out. The kids went around that fence. 
The department then put up a longer fence. The kids cut a hole in it. The department then put a, up a stronger fence. It too was cut. The department then put a threatening sign on the fence, but it was ignored. Finally, someone decided to change direction and ask, what really is the problem here? It's not that kids keep getting through the barrier, but that they want to skateboard in the ditch. So how can we keep them from skateboarding in the ditch? The solution was to remove their desire to skateboard there by pouring some concrete into the bottom of the ditch to disrupt the smooth curve. The sharp angle created by the concrete made skateboarding impossible and the activity stopped. No more skateboarding pr problems, no more fence problems. You are now invited to proceed to quiz three. Thank you.